Okay, I got some explaining to do. You guys had a lot to say about the knife steel in this video, so let's go back and talk about it. In the original video for this project, I concluded these knives were either cheap production knives made with low quality steel, or made from good high carbon steel with alloys that I just didn't heat treat properly, but I tended towards the conclusion that the steel was cheap, containing the bare minimum amounts of carbon, and I was wrong. So let's go back and look at the evidence and examine your questions and concerns. So the first question to answer here is whether the knives were mono steel or laminated. Lots of commenters suggested these knives were layered soft and hard to steel with high carbon quality core steel surrounded by a layer of mild steel or iron on either side called sand mine construction or the knives contained a strip of quality steel welded to the edge of a knife that was otherwise mostly mild steel or iron. Well, let's look at the clues first. Clue number one is that rust and pitting is uniform on each individual blade, best I can tell. Iron will rust differently than mild steel, which rusts a bit differently than high carbon steel, all of which should be noticeable when the materials butt up, you know, butt up right against each other in the same knife, unless everything is completely falling apart from corrosion. Some of these knives were badly corroded, uh, so I can't rule out multi-steel construction, but I don't think the rusting pattern supports that at any rate. Clue number two, the etching. After consolidating the knives, I often had to clean up the edges of the billet and check them with etching to see if there were any signs of bad welds or heterogeneous metals. I didn't show a lot of that, but I did take a little bit of video. Different metals with different carbon contents tend to etch differently. There aren't that many folds here, and any heterogeneous layers of steel should be apparent. I didn't really see any. Number three, sparking. During cleanup of the blades, we got to spark test them. Essentially, the rust doesn't spark much because it's iron oxide, but once underneath the rust, it looked like the blade and tang portions were sparking the same to me. But what about the edge, Steve? How did the edges spark? What if they sparked like high carbon steel? You didn't grind on them, you just threw them away. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first, here's iron sparking on my grinder. A few long, non-bursting sparks. The steel we had uh, showed uh, much longer, more bursty sparks. Here's a little sample. Here's three pieces of mild steel from Home Depot, essentially. Well, on the right, obviously, rebar. Here's 1095 high carbon steel. Look at all those copious yellow long sparks that burst. Mild steel, high carbon steel. So here's some of our leftover knife pieces. This is the back of the knife or the spine. And it's got sort of orangish long sparks that don't do a lot of bursting. Now here's the edge portion of the blade. Identical. Lots of long sparks, slightly orange. Don't do a lot of bursting. It definitely doesn't look like our Simple high carbon steel, right? At any rate, we'll come back to sparking a little more later. Clue number four is hardness testing. Granted, these hardness files are not a perfect way to check HRC, but they're best I can do. Recall that I hardened a few billets during the construction of this knife to check grain size after fracturing. The files pointed to a hardness of between 55 and 60, probably closer to 55, which is what the final HRC of the forged knife turned out to be. You know, mild steel and iron don't usually harden to 55 HRC. So the evidence in the camp for mono steel is that it rusted like mono steel. The knives looked like mono steel from a rust standpoint. They etched and sparked like mono steel, at least at this point. And they hardened like the high-ish carbon mono steel, at least unlike mild steel. So if it's a mono steel, which mono steel is it? I said we'd come back to the spark test. So these two original limes sparked with moderate to many yellow orangish sparks that didn't burst much. That color and pattern isn't very consistent with mild steel or even simple high carbon steel like this 1095 or Hitachi white paper steel, which is a pure high carbon steel, ultra high carbon steel. To me, it says alloys. Hitachi blue steel is used in Japanese kitchen knives pretty commonly and contains alloys, including small amounts of chromium and tungsten. I don't have any of that laying around, but I do have O1, which has chromium and tungsten, though a bit less carbon and tungsten than Hitachi Blue. The point is, it's alloyed and sparks similarly to our two original knives with orange, long, non-bursty sparks. So maybe the steel we're dealing with is something like Hitachi Blue, a high carbon steel that has uh, uh, some alloys in it. Okay, let's clean up and hardness check these two blades. I've ground off the rust because we can't hardness check that. 
And oh my gosh, these are both 65 HRC, maybe maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I cannot believe my eyeballs. You know, they're the same hardness near the spine as they are the edge, which tends to reinforce our mono steel theory. But that hardness is nuts. Why did my final knife turn out to have a hardness of only 57? These are almost eight, nine points higher. Um, why are kitchen knives 65 HRC? Japanese kitchen knives usually aren't that hard. So maybe I didn't quench mine in the correct substrate. So I used Parks 50, which is about as fast as water. Maybe I should have used a brine. Or maybe this is air or plate quenching uh, steel. Although the latter two are unlikely. You know, those types of steels don't tend to forge well under the conditions I have here. So at any rate, let's heat one of these and we'll salt water uh, brine quench it and see if we can get it back to that 65-ish HRC. Yeah, so it got back up to 65 HRC in a brine quench. There really shouldn't be eight, nine, ten points of difference between a Parks 50 quench and a brine quench. So let's go back and check this in Parks 50 and see if it quenches to the same hardness. So both a brine and Parks 50 quench ended in a 65-ish HRC. I got questions. Like, again, why is my knife so much lower on the HRC scale? Why didn't I check all this before starting my project? So I've hardness checked the edge of my knife again. Yeah, it's right about, I'm guessing, 56, 57. 58 would be generous, but let's run it back through heat treating. You know, let's quench it again back in Parks 50 and see if we can't get it as hard as those two original knives. First, let's pop it in the oven for some normalization. So a 65 HRC file is going to dig in everywhere, 60 HRC file is going to pretty much dig in most places, and then 55 HRC skates everywhere. So now it's time to etch it because th this is not what I expected at all. And bam, here it is. We have at least two steels here. One hardens to around 65 HRC, maybe a little better. The other just over 55 HRC. Um, this was not evident on the etching of our billets earlier. You remember when we etched stuff because they weren't hardened when that etching took place and that decreases the contrast offered by different steels. Um, all those different striations of a harder and not as hard steel, uh, account for why I described the edge as toothy when I was doing the cut test. It's, you know, that would be a good explanation for the toothiness. So I have three theories. You guys let me know what you think. The first is that all knives are mono steel construction, just different steels. The two knives we have left and are checking are something that's hardenable to over 65, maybe Hitachi blue or something like it with some alloys in it. And then the others are softer steel, at least some of the others that maximally hardens to just over 55 HRC. That would be a little bit on the soft side for Japanese chef knives. The next theory would be that some of the knives were mono steel, like the ones we checked and some were laminated. Um, again, I'm not sure that a lot of the steels you would use to laminate would reach an HRC over 55, but maybe that's possible. Number three, all were multi-steel construction, and that fact was obscured in our testing here by corrosion and the thinness of the blades. This sort of seems like the least likely explanation to me, but you know, at this point, I'm pretty much a big dummy. So I'm here to eat my hat. And uh, um, I made significant assumptions about the blades when I started this project without doing any formal testing of the material because things seemed to point in one direction as I was working with it. And that, that, was just, that was just a mistake. I ended up with a knife that was usable, but frankly, a little bit inferior. So lots of new information here. What do you guys think these knives were made of?